Hello there and welcome to my first look, honest reaction, honest review of the Starship Simulator official game overview. Will this be the new one? Will this be the new space sim? Of space sims. Hello and thank you for Let's find out. the time to check out Starship Simulator. My it's kind of quiet. Rupia, and I'm the Starship Simulator. Now I imagine quite a few of you might be thinking, does the space sim genre really need another new title? Yes. This just end up being another Can't clone of too many. out there, or a simple rehashing of existing ideas. Well, hopefully, by the end of this video, you'll agree that we do have something unique to bring to the table, which are you calling a unique? fans, myself included, have been wanting for a very long time. Put simply, Starship Simulator is my answer to one simple question. What would I do if someone handed me the keys to a real, fully working starship? Without any hesitation, I would just pick a random star in the sky and then fly off to explore its mysteries. And then along the way, I'd be nosing around every inch of my new vessel to learn exactly how it all works. So you're going to fly off to space first, and then find out how the ship flies to space. Make it make sense. <laughs> and, that really and you're going to fly off to like a distant star face value. by yourself. You've got a fully working starship, a whole galaxy to explore, and the freedom to fly anywhere you want. Just to or if you fly to space and then come back and it's been a thousand but years. If we dig deeper, there is, of course, a whole lot more going on under the hood. Let's start with the ship itself. Growing up, I really wanted to be an architect. And I wonder if, the, I wonder if that character is custom. That interest in architecture never really went away. Customizable character. So when it came to design as well as ships, starship, I really wanted to design and build a starship. Now, in a typical video game environment, there's generally nothing going on behind the walls and floors. It's actually just smoke and mirrors to sell the illusion of a real solid location. I don't know. No one's sky's pretty good. Any wall panel, and you'll find the ship's genuine structural framework, all designed in oh, oh, okay, okay, right okay, that's what it's about. Individual bolts and weld lines. You'll also find miles of pipes, cables, and conduits that are all fully simulated. How huge is this ship? Of the ship's systems. For example, turning off these breakers will kill power to the bridge. Oh. So lights and consoles to genuinely stop receiving the simulated electrical current from their attached cables. If you pay attention to the readout when the breakers are turned back on, you can see the electrical draw increases as expected. This means that okay, the okay, that's kind of cool. Takes damage naturally becomes this is the alpha tech demo. Because that could make the difference between losing oh, he's bald now. or losing your entire FTL drive. Who let Hitman on the game? As you can imagine, if you're playing as an engineer, you'll certainly have a lot to be getting on with. But we intend for every roll aboard the ship to be approached with the same amount of depth and attention to detail. Speaking of jobs to do, we're planning to include eight basic roles to begin with, from the captain to a simple passenger who's merely tagging along for the ride. Each department uh, doesn't seem that tasks. too customizable. The NPC crew alike will work through those tasks to keep the ship up and running smoothly. The tasks themselves won't be arbitrary though; they'll be generated on the fly, depending it's on. Nothing crazy for the character, but it's probably Taking pretty as an example, not. Again, if a component is damaged. Then a task will be generated for that specific component that an NPC, to be investigated. Though? A player or an NPC then picks NPC? up that task on a first come, first serve basis and then works to resolve the issue. Don't worry if you have no interest in engineering, though. The NPC crew members will actually be fully capable of running any of the ship's departments entirely on their own. If you this means that, pilot, this means that the ship that you're on is like a giant cruiser, like some uh... side of your chosen role. In fact, some Star Trek shit going on, you know? As a passenger, then you actually won't have any jobs to do at all. Instead, an NPC captain will take control of the ship. There could be a massive firefight happening right outside the window, while you're just sat there in the bar sipping your favourite space beverage. You can just be like, nah, not my problem. Not bad. Deal with that. The NPC crew members also play a big part in making the ship feel more lived in, with each of them having their own lives aboard the ship. They'll have their own crew quarters, their own shift patterns, they'll eat, drink, and even use the bathroom if they need to. You won't need to worry about micromanaging them, though. Damn, just that means if you're desperate for a shit, and one of these NPCs are already in there... ...form a strong attachment to their new home and life stars, so we're including many customization options right out of the box. You can customize your ship's name and registry number, and this updates in various places around the ship. Ooh. You can change the interior decor, like the default lighting hues, I can cover up the shit stains for the making the ship brown then. <laughs> you can customize the colors of the UI panels to match your chosen theme. Okay. And you can even enable ship-wide seasonal decorations depending on the time of year. We'll be expanding what's possible with this over time, 
the cosmetic options such as these will always be free and included as part of the base experience. Always be free, I like the sound of that. The ship's interior will also be highly interactive, with every button on every panel performing some form of tangible action. I feel like I've seen it in a sci-fi movie before. Games ...when you're surrounded by buttons or switches that just don't do anything. So in our game, every single button will serve a practical purpose. There will also be hundreds of physical items that you can pick up and interact with. And they will remain where you left them, thanks to our object Oh, isn't that kind of like a... Find a cool looking alien. Wasn't there like a... Wasn't there like a space sim kind of game where... You have to spend IRL money... To get like a, a ship or something? And it's ridiculously expensive. But the world is all like... Ev wherever you leave something, it stays there forever, for all eternity, unless somebody else moves it. You know? Isn't it, isn't it kind of like that? I don't I don't remember the name of it. I'll have to I'll have to look it up. I'll put it somewhere on the screen. And you can put it literally anywhere on your ship. And it but there's a game kind of like that. Yeah, we could just we could just dump something like a random object there and it'll stay there. To really feel like they're living and working on a huge vessel. So it's co-op then. It's co-op if, if there's two people here racing. While you're out exploring the cosmos. And speaking of exploring, that brings us nicely onto the subject of the galaxy itself. Just like the ship, the galaxy is also being built as realistically as possible, using real astrophysics and a true one-to-one -one scale. Does that mean? Explore the real Milky Way, so we want our simulated version to be. Does that mean all the planets are empty then? With a realistic physical structure and scientifically accurate galactic regions. Uh... Every system you visit should be scientifically plausible and packed with everything you would expect to find in any star system, from star grazing comets to an array of Kuiper. You can't use current modern scientific. Uh, scientific information because what we know to well, well Earth isn't exactly an advanced civilization, is it? We're realistically we're we're primitive if you compare it to like if there is some sort of like intelligent species out there that's circumnavigating the galaxy. When they come to us, we're basically still in the unga bunga phase of of that intelligence. You know, <laughs> we're still we're still idiots. Using clubs, okay. So using using our knowledge right now isn't something that's good for a space sim, and that's you know kind of futuristic. Wormholes. Random wormholes. Why does that ship look like a early two thousand CD player? Look at it. Do you remember them? Do you remember them CD players that you could put into a pocket, into your like your denim jacket pockets? <laughs> it looks like that. <laughs> alien cultures scattered throughout the entire galaxy. Alien cultures. If a planet or moon is capable of supporting liquid water, then it will run further calculations to generate life on its surface, and also in space if the culture there is advanced enough. Depending on how old the planet is, its life could be anything from simple bacteria. A highly advanced Ooh. space culture with motivations far beyond human understanding. Alien cultures would also have a wide array of procedural attributes that will shape their reaction to your presence. They could be pacifistic space hippies or bloodthirsty psychopaths that just want to watch the galaxy burn. We'll also be procedurally <gasps> Little green, look, look at that, look at that, look at that! Little grey alien space butt cheeks! Ah, oh, finally, finally, look at that. Simple structure, their history, Many other details to make each new culture you encounter different from the last. Oh my god, fucking adverts. And that last point is actually very important, because with a game that focuses entirely on exploration as its main hook, diversity of content is critical to maintain the Let's get down to the real question here for this game. Can we clap alien butt cheeks? <laughs> <laughs> Can we romance said grey booties? Joy of discovery. We're taking depth of content very seriously, and depending on how well we're funded, our intention is to create a team of developers whose job it will be to focus 100% on just creating new content for the galaxy. Ooh. I will not personally consider our job complete until every single star system can generate something new and interesting to discover. So how do we actually get out there and find this content? Well, most of the time, you'll navigate the galaxy by first scanning the stars in the local vicinity, and then select the target okay. of interest to send to the helm station. Alternatively, you can just point the ship in any random direction you like, and then spin up the FTL drive to see what you might stumble across. 
Our galaxy Wait, so we can go to our galaxy? ...three-dimensional environment. And that's another important point, actually, because if you pay attention to the stars outside of the window, you'll see that they are actually all drifting past in real time. This means we are genuinely traversing okay, okay, okay. in space. Kind of so cool. We can change direction Pretty cool. FTL, or drop to sublight engines anywhere at any time. What's that? Gas? Dark matter? Galactic space level, in color? So opens the door to what is that? Just dust? We could have a stranded alien vessel out here. Is that lightning? Systems, or rogue planets lurking in the darkness between stars. It also means that multiple forms of FTL travel will be easy to implement in the Ooh, future, FTL. From outcubiary drives to hyperspace or jump pits. In fact, different alien races will get around using different techniques. And you'll eventually be able to ah. retrofit your ship with their technology. So you can travel the galaxy. So we can Frankenstein our ship with random So hopefully that gives you some idea of what it is we're Parts? There is, of course, a lot more I could go into, like the multiplayer, VR, planetary landings. VR, ooh, I wish I had VR. Master mode for role players. But Claire, my co-director, and more importantly, wife, what a chicken. has insisted that I keep this brief. <laughs> so the most important thing to take away from this video is that this is a space exploration game, designed and built by someone who has spent tens of thousands of hours exploring in all the other big space sims over the years. This is in every way our dream project, and we're definitely not stopping until it's done. I'll close by saying a huge Ooh. thank you again for taking the time to check out Starship Simulator, and I'll see you guys out there exploring the stars. Starship Simulator. That's definitely going on my wish list, if it's not already. <laughs> I'm I I would be very interested in playing this. Oh man, I wish I wish I had VR to try it out as well. I'd love to. Do you imagine? Oh, a little little grey alien space booty cheeks in VR. That'd be so funny. That'd be so good. <laughs> That'd be so funny. That'd be great content. It'd probably take forever. It'd probably be like a like a twelve hour stream to get there. But like, oh, that's so good. I'm kind of excited. I wonder if there's like a a trailer for this, or if they're going to release a trailer at some point for this. I would like to see that. Let me guys. Guys, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Like the video whilst you're at it. Subscribe. Give me a little subarino, you know, help me out. Yeah, let me let me know what you think. I'm definitely I definitely want this. I definitely want this. This is the game for me. I'm very excited. But yeah. I'll see you in the next one.